what is up guys nick here helping you to master your technology iphone 10 2.5 years later now this phone has been out since november 2017 making it around two and a half years old later this year when the iphone 12 does launch this phone will be three and then considering how this phone looks i think it's held on pretty well this was an iconic redesign for apple here and this phone's going for around three to five hundred bucks right now so consider this a decent value if you still want a premium looking iphone phone on the low this phone came out it did have quite a bit of density around 174 grams it wasn't too heavy but it definitely for the size it was a little bit strange of the weight of this phone the iphone 7 the iphone 8 before it was definitely a lighter device but the stainless steel edges gave this phone a very premium feel in the hand so when it just comes to the weight factor of this device it's still lighter than the iphone 11 pro as of right now so still giving you a premium feel with enough density to feel like you paid a substantial amount for this device next up the body the design of this body where does it stand now well considering that the iphone 10s looked exactly the same and the 11 pro is only slightly improved over the iphone 10 i do think it's still a very good looking phone right now definitely i think looks better than the iphone se that just launched this year and you can get this for around the same money but you will be sacrificing a few things we'll talk about more what they are later but i still think this phone especially in this silver color looked really nice although there wasn't many colors for this phone that's where the 10r slotted in the design elements the notch up here was definitely controversial at the time so much so that some people were actually making commercials bashing the notch those have since been removed but Pretty thin bezels right here all the way around the edges. And one thing that was really nice about the 10 is how far down this screen came to the edge here. Look how thin that bezel is at the bottom. Manufacturers had to catch up to that. Now you can also see the iPhone logo here. That went away. This is also further down. So that's a little bit of an older look. You know, the iPhone logo being, the Apple logo being up a little bit higher. And this camera bump was a little bit thick. You know, you could probably cut some fruit with that thing, but I did like the bigger power button that also combined for Siri, no more home button on this one. Overall, the design aesthetics of this phone are still very comfortable and definitely still premium looking. A lot of people would just think you have the 10S if you were holding this phone. That's how similar it does look. Next up, display. Man, this Samsung display on here is beautiful. Definitely the way Apple tuned it to be pretty accurate, not oversaturated, extremely bright here. We're talking 625 nits of brightness also gets very very dim for nighttime so still an absolutely high-end display i've had no burn-in issues on this phone if you have an iphone 10 and you had that issue let us know down below but you have dark mode on board you have night shift on board you also have true tone also this does have 3d touch when you do punch in goes in very fast to applications and stuff like that so the 3d touch was nice a very good sharpness here at 458 ppi so if we are looking at text here we're looking at some old scores definitely very sharp text on the iPhone 10, you're not gonna have an issue reading basically anything. Now, I've said before in a lot of my previous 10 that the notch can get in the way sometimes, like for example, if you pinch in, you could see the gets cut into the text right there. But honestly, it's not a big deal. Just pinch back out, read normally like this, and it won't bother you. Most people have gotten used to it. It's not really a big deal anymore, but we would like to see it get even more reduced on the iPhone 12. So we're gonna go ahead and check out a video here to kind of see how the display looks on the More Nick Ackerman channel. That's my second channel where I talk other things uh, not related so much to this channel, but let's go ahead and check out this previous vlog here we just did yesterday. And a link to the channel will be down below if you wanna check out my second channel. But you can just see, look at this boy. Definitely a really nice view of content right here. A lot of times what I did, I just took my thumb on this phone and kind of covered up the notch and just held it like this. You just got a full view. So really still a fantastic display here in 2020. There's really not a big complaint at all with this. So most people will like it. And then you just swipe out with the gestures. That's another new thing that came with the iPhone 10 was the gestures. And they're as smooth as ever today. There's still Android phones out right now that are not as smooth as the gesture performance on the iPhone iPhone 10. So take that for what it's worth. You did get some dynamic wallpapers that came with iOS 13 that will switch between different colors when you are dark and you are in lighter conditions. So let's go to this green one right here since it's around springtime going into summer. And we'll come back home here once it sets. Let it set right there. A little bit of a delay. But if we go ahead and punch in and we hit dark mode, you'll see that it dynamically shifts there on the iPhone 10. So very nice wallpaper. And last thing I want to mention is that this does have the 120 hertz touch 
sensing technology, not the refresh. So the display isn't any smoother, but when you do tap applications, they have this smoother feel to them. So everything just feels like butter when you're opening up applications on the iPhone 10. So if you buy the iPhone 10 right now, you're getting iOS 13.5. It's the latest version that was adapted for COVID. So like if it sees your face with a mask, it'll be a little bit quicker to pop up the passcode when you're using it. Overall, other than that, there's not a big amount of changes to the software. There was some fixes for FaceTime group, but overall, you know, you still have still your grid of icons here, you know, very polished operating system. Uh, over here in the right hand corner, if you're coming from a smaller phone, you're not going to see the battery percentage unless you bring it down like so. But this is where your control center does reside here in the iPhone 10. And then from the bottom again, it's just gestures. Now, I got to say though, that the software on here, really what's key right now in terms of our current times is that you just have a lot of amazing applications. So using iPhone is really not a bad idea right now as you have a lot of great games, a lot of great video chatting apps, a lot of applications that just are really good for the current times. And as more apps get developed, probably a lot of them will be developed still first for the iPhone. So still a great option here in terms of the software. It's still up to date and I still see it going pretty far down the line in terms of getting updated. And that brings me on to the Apple A11. Now we could go ahead and run a Geekbench all day on this phone. It's not gonna have the fastest scores in 2020. We have an A11 Bionic at 2.39 gigahertz hertz and it has 2.75 gig ram it's actually three gigs of ram um, but you can run these benchmarks all day it's not going to beat the 11 pro it's not going to beat the 10s but in the actual real world performance you're going to notice that everything just runs pretty quick now i will say that there's a little bit of a snappier feel to the newer phones of course but this one is not slow at all it's still a lot faster than a lot of other phones you can get for 300 bucks here especially budget devices not you know premium budget phones but this still feels faster than say like a galaxy a51 for example, in my opinion, and this is a 10 nanometer CPU on this phone. So very solid performance here. They can definitely run all the games pretty much no problem. Now, when you are running games, I will state that the performance on the iPhone 10 definitely gets pretty hot. So when in these games, you might want to put a case on this so you don't burn your hands. Now, you're not going to burn your hands. I'm just kidding. But it does get pretty warm on this phone and the battery will drain a lot when doing performance intensive tasks on the iPhone 10, a little bit more so than the newer iPhones. Comes to the camera, one thing Apple has always done well is making very good cameras and the iPhone 10 is no exception. This phone definitely has plenty enough camera performance for the average user or somebody just looking for a cheaper secondhand iPhone. Definitely gonna be very good. Uh, video performance is 4K 60 and in good lighting, this thing always performed well for me. Now, I will say one thing, the newer iPhones do have better dynamic range in this phone. The portrait mode has been improved, of course. You have smart HDR on the new phones. So this one is just your standard, you know, iPhone camera with good performance. And it doesn't really disappoint. I think a lot of people are still using the iPhone 10. Definitely are still posting pictures. Definitely are still posting video. And nobody's really noticing you're using a three-year-old phone almost. So we'll flip it around to the front. This is where phones have gotten much better. The front-facing camera is much better on the iPhone 11. The iPhone 11 Pro video and photo quality are much better on those phones. You can only do 1080 30 video on this one. So selfie fans, this probably isn't for you, but at the same time, the rear camera should be fine enough for most people 2.5 years later right now, especially if you are, again, you're looking for a cheap way to get on a more modern, fresher feeling iPhone. This one has held on pretty well. Take a look at some of the samples I took with this phone and judge for yourself. What do you think of this camera overall? And talking about the audio quality. So the iPhone XR is the best iPhone you can buy mid-2020 and the best iPhone value. I have a, quite a few reasons why I think this is the case.
You can see that the bottom speaker, I keep covering it because I want to show you that the bottom one is louder than the top speaker, but still it does a fantastic job in audio for this phone. However, again, no headphone jack. You could get an S10 if you want a headphone jack or an S10 Plus for a similar price range with that feature if you want it, or even an S9 or an S9 Plus if you want a secondhand phone with a headphone jack, but still plenty of loud audio enough on this phone. Life also on the iPhone 10 three years later, as long as you have a good battery health, on your phone, let's go over here to battery health. As long as you have a good battery health on your iPhone 10, you'll definitely get through most of the day. If you're a light user, you'll get through the day. If you're medium to heavy, you might be charging around eight, nine o'clock at night, depending on how early you wake up. Again, gamers will be charging this thing every two, three hours, so don't expect this thing to last all day there. Also, I found the camera drastically reduces the battery life on this phone, especially when doing video. So it's really down to you know how much video you're doing, how much gaming you're doing, how heavy you're using this phone. But for most, I think four to five hours on screen time, sometimes six or seven if you really got the brightness down, this will get you through the day, the iPhone 10. 10 was also capable of wireless charging, so you could place this on a wireless charger and this thing will wirelessly charge. Also, it's capable of fast charging if you use a bigger brick on this phone. And lastly, I wanna talk about a couple of things, the storage options for the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 has pretty good storage options going all the way up to 256 gigs. So you don't gotta worry, this is the 256 gig model. You don't have to worry about, you know, finding an iPhone with too little storage. This one started at 64. I will say that the phone call quality on this device has been spotty. It's been average, but, you know, depending on your area, it probably is going to work just fine. And lastly, the Face ID performance for this phone. It's not as good as the newer iPhones because certain angles it will miss. And the performance on the newer, like 10R, even the, the iPhone 10s, even the, the iPhone 11 Pro, better on different angles. Uh, but this one, for the first try, worked fantastic. But yeah, that's it. I mean, you can see I'm overwhelmingly positive about the iPhone 10. There's not a lot to dislike about this phone right now. I mean, the camera, it's a little bit older, yeah. Uh, the battery life, probably not as good as a lot of the other iPhones, but there's still people rocking 6S. There's still people rocking 7s, 8s right now. I mean, there's nothing wrong with an iPhone 10 right now. It's just an older phone, as simple as that. It's not a newer phone, but it still feels a little bit more modern. It looks definitely like an iPhone 11 Pro from the front. It looks like a 10s from the front. You could have one of these for around three to 400 bucks, depending on where you look in the US at least. That's gonna be secondhand, but as long as you find a reputable person selling it with good battery health, good condition, you're not gonna get a bad deal. Anyway, if you guys found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, let me know down below in the comments section. If you have any other questions related, also leave those down below. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and peace.